I managed to get myself a shulker box of each color of wool, so I consider this a massive success. But these aren't the only color blocks I could make in order to increase the colors in my base. There's also something known as terracotta. What up my roomies and welcome back to the technical guide to Minecraft. And it's really been a little bit, hasn't it? As you all know, Minecraft has recently updated to 1.21. And with it, I needed to wait until certain optimization mods were updated for the server in order for me to play on it. Which also meant that, uh, conveniently, I took a break. <laughs> for better or for worse, I needed to take a break. But at the same time, I've also been playing around with Create Resurrect on my Resurrect SMP server, which the first episode just released on Wednesday, so uh, be sure to check that out. But yes, today, we're going to be starting our adventure to getting colored terracotta. As with all things, we need to start with the basics. In order to get terracotta, we're going to need clay. To get clay, we're going to need mud. And for mud, we're going to need dirt. There are two ways to go about getting the kind of dirt that we need. We could either use regular dirt, or we could use coarse dirt. And I think because the new update of 1.21 has just come out, I think it's a good time to start exploring what the crafter can do. Plus, I can't really explain how the dirt farm will work until a little bit later on, so we're going to kind of do this a little bit out of order. So, first things first, we're going to make ourselves a coarse dirt farm, or rather a coarse dirt generator, depending on how you kind of look at it. But first, before we do any of that, we're going to have to go get ourselves, eh, let's say, two shulker boxes worth of dirt, since we've been getting two shulker boxes worth of stuff anyway. So, uh, yeah, let's go do that. Okay, now that we got in our two shulker boxes worth of dirt, the other part of making coarse dirt is getting ourselves some gravel. So, we're gonna go over to the end, and we're gonna use a concrete processor, but instead of making concrete, we're gonna make ourselves some more gravel instead. So all that is now lined up with gravel. All we gotta do is flip this bar, go into the end, and kinda just wait there. I was finishing up and I also realized that this void trader, much to my dismay, and even though I used it a whole lot, it's no longer in use because in the latest 1.21 patch, this void trader it doesn't work. But not to worry, there is a solution on how to make a void trader. It's just we're gonna have to move these villagers elsewhere and set up a different kind of area, but that's fine. That's a future Kigu problem. Now that we got our gravel, we gotta go over on how to use a crafter in order to make ourselves some coarse dirt really quickly and with minimal input. And so, welcome to Gigacore, where safety is a concern. So over here, we just have the modest crafting table. And this, for the longest time, has been essential in making all of our dreams come true. And in this case, we're going to dream up some coarse dirt. All you need is a cross section of regular dirt and gravel. And this, you get for coarse dirt. So essentially, you get twice the amount of dirt that you put in. It's pretty handy in case you want to have more dirt. But here's the thing. Of course, manually changing all the dirt into coarse dirt does take a long time. So what if you already have all the dirt that you need? And and have all the gravel that you could ever possibly want. Well, why not use a crafter to automatically do it for you? And this right here is the new block, the block that I've been waiting for and that I've been the most excited about. It'll be able to make all the blocks that we normally have to manually craft and automatically craft it for us. It's really something I never thought would ever happen in Minecraft and yet here we are in 1.21. And how this works is that when you open up the crafter, you could actually click certain spots to disable it. So if you just want this 2x2 two two area, and then just do the cross section of dirt and gravel just like before, we can make ourselves... Oh wait, no. You can't 
actually grab the dirt through its UI. You're gonna have to use a redstone signal to eject it out so you can get your coarse dirt, which I think is a brilliant mechanic and really kind of balances this thing because this had the potential to really make the game boring for technical players. And so having this redstone input that you need in order for the autocrafter to work kind of makes things a little bit more interesting. And you might be wondering, why don't you just use a hopper to suck out the output? If you actually see what happens if you put a hopper underneath, because a hopper indiscriminately pulls all the items out of the block it's pulling from, when you try to pull something in, it automatically gets sucked in. Thus, me putting in the gravel in here, moot. And so you really must use this lever in order to eject items out of the output. But the interesting part is that it doesn't only shoot from the front, it can shoot from any side, whichever this face is facing, which kind of looks like an angry boy if you kind of like squint really hard. So if it's pointing upwards, it could shoot up and likewise left right up and down and so it doesn't matter exactly where the mouth is because it'll always shoot out the front of the block and so you might be thinking to yourself well why don't we just strap this crafter in with hoppers and then just feed it into this crafter and then just do what we normally do and just hook it up to an observer clock well you can but there's a problem See, the observer clock actually produces redstone pulses faster than a hopper can actually put into the autocrafter, faster than a single hopper can put into a container. And so, what'll end up happening is that while this is making more and more of our core dirt, it's actually using up more of the material than it is getting in. And thus, eventually, you'll get to a point where this whole thing will then break because the ingredients call for a cross section and as you see, it's no longer a cross section and thus this entire thing breaks. So then what do you do? Well, you have two options really. The first option is to increase the input speed by putting in more hoppers or using a dropper clock. And your second option is to slow down the redstone pulse to best match the input of the hopper speed. And so finally we have this, where we have a double chest that has the front facing behind it and it's going to empty out the double chest into these two shulker boxes. And at the same time, we have two double chests that have two hoppers that are going into the crafter that has two hoppers going into the crafter. So the top one is going through the top and to the right while the side chest is going on the left and through the back. But even with this, the input is not gonna be fast enough for an observer clock. We still need to slow it down. And so we are busting out just a basic repeater. And with a repeater set to the second position, you'll see that the slow down redstone pulses combined with the double hopper speed from both chests means that the crafter can keep up with the production of coarse dirt. And it's all neatly compact in this sort of small area. Now granted, there are more optimized ways to do this. But for the sake of understanding how the crafter works, this is what we have. This is intended to show kind of the basics of how the crafter works. And so in here, we have an even split of course dirt between both shulker boxes. And this will keep going until both double chests are empty. It's all really that simple. For those that want to play around with this, there's going to be a schematic and a world download in the description below. And with that in mind, let's head back to the technical guide world and get to it. Quick interruption. I noticed that only 12% of you are actually subscribed to this channel. Watching this long, I must be doing something right. So if you like this video, hit that like button and please subscribe to this channel. Any support helps and these videos take a bit long to make. Thank you so much and back to the video. Okay, now that we've gotten all that sorted, let's go ahead and start building this thing.
So yeah, if you were watching the replay, you'll notice that uh, I was kind of figuring out how to make the autocrafter and uh, some inside baseball. I made the kind of tutorial portion of this episode after making this thing because I kind of figured how it would work, but it turns out it works kind of differently than how I imagined. But not to worry, we still got our core dirt. And as you can see, we got ourselves a little over four shulker boxes worth of core dirt, which is going to be plenty for the next stage because not only can you make mud with dirt, but you can make mud with core dirt. And so we're going to be using this in order to make ourselves a mud farm. <laughs> 